On today's episode of Watch JR Go, we see if we can turn my cheap KTM Duke 690 into a Lexus. A whole car, two more wheels. What is going on guys? I am Watch JR Go, and today we have done it, boys. We have turned that KTM 690 Duke into a Camry. It's the luxury Camry. So this is a 2010 Lexus ES350 and we traded straight across. Um, it kind of works out because that bike had 14,000 miles on it and was like all put together. And this one has 253,000 and change and is a little less put together. But we are gonna rehab this beast and bring it back to life so somebody can roll around in the luxury Camry in style. So like I said, this is the 2010 Lexus ES350, which is the fifth generation of the Lexus executive sedan. If you don't know the Lexus, it's kind of cool. The, the engine numbers on the back, the 350 actually defines what the engine is. But if you don't know the rest of the Lexus naming convention, it's pretty simple The very entry level, even though they kind of consider this to be the entry level, is the IS. The ISs are way cheaper and way less option than the ESs are. Uh, so it's IS, ES, GS, LS. LS is Lexus sedan or luxury sedan. GS, I assume, is gangster sedan. And ES is executive sedan. I mean, that's, you gotta graduate up. IS would be like teenage sedan. <laughs> that's where all the ISs ended up. I don't know. So anyway, like I was saying, this is an ES350, so it is powered by the 3.5 liter V6. We'll open the hood up here in a second and check it out, but we'll walk around the car real quick. You can see that it's a well-proportioned Camry. It's just kind of a little more bloated and it's a good look. I always think they look very classy going down the road. This is a facelifted one. In 09, they facelifted the ES and they added things like the chrome door trim that's peeling a little bit and, uh, they just changed a few things. They made the system a lot better. This is kind of a base model ES350. Uh, I'm, I don't have a lot of the options like the super panoramic roof. Like there's a three panel panoramic roof that's like the entire roof is glass and I don't have adaptive crews, but the facelifted ones do all have rain sensing wipers, which is a huge deal. It's nice to have that. And they got rid of the DVD navigation that's in here and put a hard drive in it. So it actually has maps on it, which is also awesome. Also, uh, they added things that don't matter so much that became standard like memory seats. I mean, memory seats are a big deal if anyone else drives your car. So let's open the hood. Anyway, this thing has, like I said, 253,000 miles on it. There's the hood. And uh, we're gonna open the hood up. Just take a look underneath here. I do know the facelift also kind of updated the grill a little bit. And uh, the sixth generation is also the one where they put the Lexus badge back on. For a long time, it just had like a bar grill. You can see this thing desperately needs some help. The hood struts work. What a big W there. All right, so we have the 2GRFE V6 covered in lots of plastic and I, apparently they wanted to the Mercedes it. So they just covered the whole thing with plastic and put in a bunch of access panels, which are all apparently loose. These aren't held down at all. They're just sitting there. Anyway, power steering fluids under the main one, engine coolant there, wiper fluid. I love how they're all labeled. Battery access, let's take a gander. Ooh, ouch. That's, uh, that's had a life. Uh, we've got relays, fuses, and of course another giant piece of plastic that's not, not held down at all. These are not even the right fasteners. Those are just random fasteners. Anyway, the cowl's full of leaves. There's a lot of cleaning that needs done. The headlights really, really, really need done. That one's actually even yellowed out over there. Uh, and of course, the car has found lots of parking bumpers and uh, the old owner told me it also found a raccoon. That's why the fog light's missing. Good old raccoon finder 3000 here. So anyway, lots of cleaning to do under there. Uh, maybe some general maintenance, but I have drove it a little bit and I went around the block and I was like, yeah, seems fine. It has a six speed automatic transmission and I've never seen one break yet. So that's really impressive. And that V6 makes 272 horsepower to the front wheels. So the ES is front engine, front wheel drive. And uh, I mean, it's kind of a little monster. I've spent a good amount of time in a GS with all wheel drive and it is surprising how well those things go through a corner. On this thing, it might get a little wild. I think it'd probably start to like wash out and do the little, the bouncy turn thing because of the front wheel drive. 
all wheel drive ones are straight rippers. It is actually a ton of power once you get into these things. Another interesting fact about the Camry that ate too much for Thanksgiving dinner, it's not sold in Japan. It's 100% built in Japan and then exported and they don't make it in right hand drive, unlike this thing. These are all left hand drive. So let's hop inside and check out the interior. This is a full keyless go car, so look at that, keys in my pocket. So let's start up this 253,000 mile Lexus. I, I was gonna say Toyota, listen to it. 253,000 miles later and it just purrs like a kitten. Anyway, these cars looked super futuristic when they came out because the LED gauges looked better than everything else on the road. And honestly, they still hold up today. It's cool, there, there's a glow from the needle and it obviously follows with the sweep and kind of draws your eye to the needle and gives you a good indication of what's going on without really paying too much attention. We've also got some cool buttons down here like power rear sunshade. And it works, which is kind of surprising. On Mercedes, they love to brake. We're going for it. I'm gonna push the button that might end my day. Oh, it is auto. Nice. Wow. And it runs well. Good job. We do have home link. Always nice. And uh, coming down here in the center, obviously we have an auto dimming mirror right up above. And then we have this yellowed out display, which is super common on Lexuses, but no one knows how to address it. Uh, I've looked up a few threads on the forums and there's just tons of them on it. Basically every Lexus in this era, hey, my nav screen yellowed and everyone's like, well, it didn't happen to me. So it must be a setting issue. It's clearly a failed display. You can actually see what it's supposed to look like down there at the bottom. It's supposed to be white and this is all a white background and those are all like silver or gray, completely yellow on this. So anyway, we can jump through here and quickly see, you know, everything works great, but the display is gone. I mean, honestly, everything on here works great. And you know what? It's probably easier to use than on form. I'm a big fan of Lexus on form because I like nonsense interfaces with the mouse and all the clickiness. Uh, it's just really enjoyable to use those things until you need to do something right. <laughs> but this is a simple interface that actually works. Kind of a throwback. You got a secret compartment right here beside the steering wheel with some money in it. Power, tilt, telescope, oh yes. Auto, the rain sensing wipers, which were standardized on the facelift. So we got the sensor right up there, which is excellent, excellent. Here's the uh, transmission. You can switch it into sport. Sport mode. The car is of course upset because the door is open. Uh, ashtray down there, never been smoked in. That's always cool. Cup holders, cooled, heated and cooled seats, which is so awesome. And it does not have the Mark Levinson system, which is unfortunate. I know these days I'm all about the Burmester and the Porsches and uh, the Mercedes and everything like that. But the Mark Levinson in the Lexuses of this era was one of the greatest car audio systems ever built. Uh, it just got after it. So much power, had the, the mid bass was on point and the subwoofer wasn't overpowering until you told it to be. And it's just, it was a good setup. Unfortunately, this one is the bass uh, radio. So no giant amplifier, probably still sounds good though. The facelift adds other cool things like a Bluetooth audio and uh, a factory aux in. We got a sliding center console here that flips open. There's some Kleenex is still in there. 12 volt power, a bunch of headlight bulbs and uh, aux and USB inputs for the radio. I think that's most of the front of this beast. And uh, check it out. Every single window is auto up and auto down. This is just the greatest. Good on Lexus for the old all auto in their entry level sedan. Not only is this an entry level sedan, it's an award winning car. Hold on, I've got the awards list for it pulled up because it won so many awards. 2009 best upscale car, 2009 vehicle satisfaction award for best midsize luxury car, best new luxury car under 50K, best buy in the premium midsize class, best budget luxury sedan of 2008, best new car for 07, best in class for 08, best car value over $23,000 for 2007. That's a very, very specific award. I, I assume that you could just price your car $1,000 more up and win the next award. Uh, and Polk Automotive Loyalty Award for 2008. Obviously, it's a Lexus. They have some of the highest consumer satisfaction right up there with Toyota. And I'm excited to have one of these because it's, it's actually really good to drive. So the back seats look really good for the mileage. Got a little tear right there. 
It's actually very minute. It doesn't even lift up. Seats look like they're in great shape back here. We should have cup holders that, yeah, check it out. Flip open. Ski pass through. Headrests that all move up and down. Little rear climate action right there. Let's open the trunk and check that out. Gas door works, which is cool. You can see the tether was broke there. And uh, a lot of stickers. We got Wichita State Shockers, Bulldog Pride, Chiefs Family, uh, AZ USA. It's, this thing's been to some colleges. And uh, there's the factory books, all of that good stuff. So in the back, we have the complete toolkit, which is nice. Uh, everything's back there. The pliers, the screwdriver, the wheel lug tool. Uh, and then here is an actual wheel off the vehicle that is cracked or corroded so bad it won't hold air anymore. The tires on it are new. Let's shut this thing off and talk about the wheel problems that plagued all of these cars. These were facelifted wheels. The twin spoke wheels here with the uh, rust coming through. Unfortunately, this is super common on these cars, especially if they were driven in salty wet environments and stuff like that. Uh, the tires are in excellent shape all the way around this thing, but all of the wheels honestly need to come off and go get powder coated, stripped and powder coated, or just replaced. So that is like the one cost on this car. And you can see the spare is actually painted and the spare is in great shape. Uh, the painted wheels held up much, much better than the chrome ones did. Honestly, none of the chrome on the car is really holding up. So it needs a good cleaning but I think we can make all of that happen very easily and this will just be a nice car once again. Just doing the windshield will go a long way. You can see how dirty that windshield is. It's a, it's a wreck and uh, this windshield's supposed to be brand new. Okay, it is. I thought it had wiper blade scratches, but it doesn't, just dirt. So there you have it, my new 2010 Lexus ES350, a fun project that should just need some basic cleaning and I think it'll turn around for a nice profit. It does need a mirror. Obviously auto dimming mirrors and they got cooked in the sun and turned black like they like to, or they turn like half brown, half mirror, and then they turn black. It died. Either way, we're gonna have to fix that mirror. We're gonna have to sort out this bumper and the fog light, the headlight and the wheels. And uh, I think this is gonna be an excellent car for somebody for a long time again. Let's do some fluids. It would be cool to pull the oil out of this, send it off to Blackstone and see just what the Blackstone report looks like from what I expect to be a eh, maintained 253,000 mile Toyota engine. Probably just like every Honda engine, perfection. The plastic here on the door is fading as well. That's a little bit unfortunate. Uh, I think really the only thing you can do to save this is just vinyl wrap it black. You can put gloss black back and make it look good again. Otherwise, if you try to polish it, it just takes more finish off of it. I think we can throw this away too. That seat really doesn't look that bad. This can go too. A few minutes of work and we vacuumed most of the dirt out of the engine compartment here. It looks much better. We'll wash this for real tomorrow and get it all cleaned up and uh, get all the dirt back off the actual engine. Uh, I vacuumed the hood insulation as well, which came out pretty well. And I think the engine bay looks <laughs> sort of presentable now. Knocking the dirt road off it does a lot for the car. And of course, all of the decals are gone off the back. And I did the back glass with the razor blade, which is the way to clean it. This paint needs some help. Ooh, ooh, there's a lot of dirt on there. You could hear it. We'll do a very, very quick bring back on it. I might try to get a front bumper 
it could be fixed but it's probably cheaper to buy this bumper there's so many of them on the road anyway that is it for today guys thank you so much for watching don't forget to head on over to shop watchjerrico.com where you get cool shirts just like this and please like share subscribe do whatever you want to do and i will talk to you next time i think this was a really good trade and it's going to be fun doing like a very fast bring back to life i wish i could just get painted wheels i'd love to trade somebody nice painted wheels um and we're gonna have to put a windshield in this because it definitely has a huge crack it's a fuyeo so you know it was made here in the u.s hood struts are pretty cool i don't know if these are lights or the exterior uh temp sensor i bet the exterior temp sensor is right in there so it looks like i'm missing some other lights i need a front clip honestly like all the structure in here looks perfect but i need the bumper that grill those two lights and a fog light so quite a bit of stuff right there then i can put the clips back in